Welcome, guys. Uh, this is our first podcast since the start of the league. Uh, we do apologize, unfortunately. Uh, a few of the guests were away, some on holidays and some busy with work, so we couldn't do one last week. Um, but I am joined today by one of our experts, Nasser Hussein, a veteran of the game, uh, Adil Hassan, and uh, our in-swinging bowler also, uh, Azad Salim, scientist, otherwise known as. Uh, Adil, I'm sorry if I didn't give you a title yet. No, I'm still no. thinking of one. <laughs> so in due time, we'll come up with one. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you're welcome, guys. Um, so firstly, I think uh, as we had a good structure going in the previous few podcasts, um, we'll start with the standings of the teams. I know it's only two games in, uh, but clearly, Fairvale Falcons have put in some dominating performances, and you can see that's being reflected in their net run rate, 5.12. They're currently miles ahead uh, of other teams, and you know... <clears throat> That's probably a sign of really good things to come. It's great to see uh, for, for real are performing like this in the early stages. What normally used to happen in the previous uh, versions of this uh, uh, format, we used to have maybe Firth Park Warriors or one of the other two teams constantly being at the top in the early stages, and then some differences coming near the end. So it's really good to see that other teams are actually dominating at the moment. Um, so I, And the teams at the bottom the moment, the Donald Dynamites and Hansel and Strikers, uh, I don't think they should feel too let down. I, I know things might not seem too uh, bright uh, at the moment, but there'll be many chances, many games to come where, where they can redeem themselves and hopefully make it into the playoffs. So a lot of exciting stuff to come, but I, I will move on to the games because I don't think there's too much to talk about here at the moment. This will become more interesting as we get into the fifth, sixth game uh, onwards. So the first game we had, Firth Park Warriors uh, versus Pagehold Panthers. Uh, I obviously, myself being included in this game, I personally felt it was a fantastic game of cricket. Really good competitive game. Uh, you know, we have class players in both sides. And this is one of the main differences you guys will notice in this uh, league compared to, for example, the last year. And uh, There's no team that you can just uh, consider to be weak or that's going to get rolled over. Uh, each team has two, three star bowlers and some very good batsmen, especially the opening batsmen. Uh, in a lot of the teams are of high quality. So, you know, you, you really have to perform at your best. Uh, just, you know, I, I will show some of the clips, but going through the scorecard, fantastic uh, opening performance from Bashar Ali. It's a real shame he's going to be away for the next three games, so he'll be missing out someone who can play the anchor role at the top. Um, we had a Sri Lankan professional in the form of Dilchan Luxman uh, join us. <laughs> We're trying to, you know, get some diversity in the league. Uh, and I, I would suggest for other teams as well, please try to bring friends, you know, uh, from other countries that you have to come and participate in the league. It's, it's good to mix and it's a great opportunity to make new friends as well. Um, fantastic player, class player Dilchan. I know he made the scorecard might not reflect the class of a player sometimes. Uh, but he was showing good control uh, during his innings. Uh, Ijaz, you know, he initially, I think, was struggling because obviously the structure of uh, our league, uh, how the runs are scored, uh, the dimensions of the hole, etc. They do play a big factor into everything, but he has adjusted really well. You can see he had a fantastic partnership with Bashar Atari and really set the foundations for the innings before our amazing Danish Hussein came in. A fantastic innings of 32, you know, Brutal innings, I would say, really. Yeah, he has a lot of raw power. Uh, I have not seen many players with this much power. And, you know, I've actually got a clip of one of his sixes here that you can see as well for yourself. I mean, the way he reads the bowlers, you're getting to the pitch of the ball. And I remember actually playing against him in the final last year. And scientists, I think you'll remember this quite well. He hit a six that nearly took my head off. Like, I was able to just about read the ball. So I personally think he's probably the most powerful hitter we have in the league. And especially against someone like Jawad, you know, it's someone very tricky to negotiate. So <clears throat> being able to hit him, uh, that, that was really good. Fantastic first innings. Um, not much coming from me, myself. Zero runs, you know, not really leading from the front as a captain. Uh, but hopefully I can do better for the team in the upcoming games. Another very good performance from Fussy, our youngsters. 
I think Hamza and the uh, Yorkshire Cricket Board have made a fantastic de uh, decision to bring in these youngsters. It's really good to give them exposure when they're around players, you know, we're playing for years like yourself, Nasser Hussain. You can, you know, uh, mould these kids uh, and point out the key mistakes that maybe we used to make at that age. And uh, I think it's really good experience for them. And uh, not just sports-wise, I think like personal development as well. You know, when you have mature people uh, in the team, it, it can have a good influence on these kids. It's much better that, you know, they could be doing other things out in the streets, but they're playing cricket um, with some good people. And I think that'll be good for their future as well. Uh, but coming back to Fasi, I think there was something, sorry, these tabs are a bit difficult, something interesting here. And I think he felt quite down when this happened. Uh, I think this is a bit of a lesson for anyone really as a bowler, especially if you're young, sometimes things don't go to plan. So this was a moment where Fasi got hit for a six and he, you know, he was looking down. He was quite frustrated. He told me later as well that he felt quite bad about this and maybe his economy rate wasn't that good. But you should always have full belief in yourself. You know, Nisar is a class player. Uh, you know, he's hit plenty of really good bowlers for sixes. So that this is what you, the kind of uh, competitive nature you need to have. If you get hit for several sixes, it doesn't matter. Uh, you should be ready to make a comeback. I'm not sorry I haven't brought you guys in. Now I think it's a good time to bring you guys in. Nasa Hussain, what would you like to say for someone who is in this situation that's just got hit for a six? <laughs> Uh, what kind of advice would you give this kind of this person to do in that moment? I think the example is in front of us, to be honest. I think uh, what Fassi has done is when he got hit for the six, you don't, you didn't see that he was, you know, nervous. I think one thing he did that, you know, he, he remained calm. He didn't panic or anything. And he stuck to his line and length. And, um, and he, we got a wicket of uh, a great batsman on his heart. So yeah. it's a great lesson for all the youngsters out there that you, you still have to remain calm no matter what. Mm, uh, obviously, that's what the batsmen obviously want to do is they want to uh, you know, get you off the line. So once mm -hmm. they hit you for the six, you know, uh, well, Nisar expected him to bowl a wide or bowl a half volley or bowl a full toss mm -hmm. and, you know, for him to dispatch him for another boundary. But one thing I like about first is, not just first year, I mean, if you look if, if you look at other youngsters, like Rehan Khan, Abu Bakr, talented cricketers and one thing I like about them they remain calm no matter what situation they're in so that's yeah. one thing I like about Fassi. Uh Scientists you know you being a bowler yourself um, if you get hit for a six I mean what was normally going through your head is there like a certain ball that you have in your mind that if I'm going for a six this is the ball I'm <laughs> going to definitely bowl the next time uh, how do you deal with this situation? Um, it depends doesn't it I think every bowler is slightly different in the approach that they take once they get hit for a six or a boundary, um, of course, it does put you under pressure. And, um, you know, <laughs> your main, you know, thinking after getting hit for the six is, I want to, you know, call wheel this guy's off stump out of the ground. <laughs> That's the thinking I'm sure every bowler has. But um, you have to read the game situation and, uh, you know, you have to um, just go to your strengths, uh, whether that be a slower ball, whether that be a, a wide yorker, uh, whether that be, you know, whatever it is, um, just go back to basics, uh, get the momentum back onto your side. Because in that moment, when you've been hit for the boundary, the momentum is with the batsman. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, chances are that he'll be looking to attack you again. So um, I always say to any of the youngsters, if you are getting hit uh, for boundaries, um, go back to your basics. Uh, go for your stock ball, whatever that stock ball is. Every ball has their different stock ball. And... Um, be confident. Be confident in uh, your stock ball and in the abilities that you possess um, because you're talented enough. Uh, you know, you've done it before. Uh, so just back yourself, you know, uh, don't overthink it uh, and just stick to what you can do best. And, uh, you know, nine out of ten times chances are the next ball will uh, bring momentum back onto your side or even better, it might get you a wicket. Yeah, th th thanks for that, scientist. Um, this is the final key moment, and I'm really sorry. There's a lot, lot of things to consider, and we don't have that much time, so sometimes I do skip over some performances from people. Uh, but I felt like this was a key moment. Five runs needed off the last ball, and you know, as a bowler there, uh, Zishan storming in, and I, to be honest with you, I was stood there and I was thinking, wide yoga, hundred percent, he's going to bowl a wide yoga consistently. Whatever he's been bowling, th this is what's coming. 
and you know he he actually does he, he and i felt like that was a really good yorker just slight mishap and this is an example of how the game could be unforgiving towards the ball already you know it's a matter of millimeters and uh, you know a bit of commotion there obviously the boarding side arguing that maybe he isn't a wide to hit the inside of the corner etc but he is a wide and at the end of the day you have to respect you know the the, the umpire uh, but then after that look how, how we adjust here you know you adjust the line and let maybe uh, Jawad is thinking it's going to be another fuller yoker length over there, but he adjusts the length and what a fantastic catch coming back at him. I, I felt like a really good competitive game of cricket. Maybe not enough credit given to Jawad who played a fantastic innings here. So th that, that was really good there. Th thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, but yeah, Adil, would you have done anything uh, differently um, uh, in this situation in terms of like yeah. the field set being a captain yourself? Uh, you know, five runs to defend, would you have done something to put the pass one off or would you just stick with your normal set of fielding and not really try anything weird at the end? Uh, I think from a bowling perspective, for me personally, I'm not as quick as Ishan, but I would have, or my always stuck ball to a left-hander as a cutter and try to take it away from him. But mm -hmm. I think what Zishan did there was bluff Jawad actually, because he was definitely expecting a wide Yorker just like before. And instead, he went for a risky, just slightly short ball, um, which paid off in the end. And he's a very experienced bowler, so I think credit to him. The only other thing um, which I think was missing here was if you hit it on the side wall, it's only um, a two. So mm -hmm. possibly another fielder could have gone back or even all four mm -hmm. could have been on the boundary line, actually. As we saw, we'll see later on um, in the Pitsmo game, they actually put all fielders all fielders on the back wall for the last game. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the only thing I would have personally done different. But nonetheless, uh, Firth Park won in the end. So that's all that matters. Yeah. Nasa, I saw you raise your hand there. Go ahead. Yeah. So my question to Adi is, would you have done some, uh, would you, would you have done anything differently if he was Ishan Karamat? Or, you know, would you have varied your pace or would you, no, would you have stuck to your line of length? No, I, de I definitely would have. My stock ball is a cutter to a left left hander. I don't want to give my stock ball away, but to a left hander, it's always going to be a cutter. So I would have definitely gone for a cutter and backed myself with that. But each their own, like as I had said earlier, every ball is different. And yeah. um, that's what he did. And also, just going back to Fassi, um, what's very unusual is for his age as well, coming around the wicket, it's so hard to control the ball when coming around the wicket. Um, I've done it myself. Mm -hmm. And I struggled a lot. So big credit to him for doing that, especially at his age, being under 15. So just a shout out to him there. Yeah, definitely. That, that, that was really fantastic to see. And obviously now coming on to, I, I felt like this was the game of the day. But definitely, I, I, I think yeah. all, all can agree there, objectively speaking. Yeah. Uh, it, it was really a fantastic game to see. Um, you know, first I want to point out really nice shirts by Burn Grief. They, they look like uh, strawberry ice cream to me. <laughs> I was pointing out this to uh, Hamza, uh, but ni nice kit, very nice kit. Um, so I think firstly, uh, batting performance. Um, Pittsmore coming in, uh, clear favourites. They have a very, very dominant side. I know Sake wasn't present in this game, which clearly, you know, uh, played a huge role because he's someone who can uh, stabilize the innings and play the aggressive role at the same time. Uh, but what I can see here from this innings, uh, and uh, especially in this, uh, sorry, from this match and in the second innings of this match, uh, is the lack of communication maybe between the batsmen and the lack of running initiative, you know. Uh, there's too much temptation in some of the team members to maybe just whack the ball straight down for a six, rather than having a good communication with the non-striker and trying to run those singles. And that is, I would say, the key part of indoor cricket. If you're unable to do that, um, when it comes to those clutch moments, especially uh, in the qualifiers, uh, you, you are going to be struggling a lot. So, you know, th th something for people to, to be mindful of. And especially, you know, class players like Sid, they don't really give much space uh, for batsmen to do much. Uh, you know, especially when the ball's pitching around there, it's very difficult to negotiate with Sid because... You don't know if that ball is then going to come forward or it's going to spin away from you. And I've many times been in that situation against Sid and, uh, you know, uh, either got bowled uh, or got caught, similarly to Shoaib. So not maybe the best day for Shoaib. I really did feel sorry for him uh, when I was looking at the scorecard. 
you know, cricket sometimes can be quite brutal. And uh, I would say to Shoaib, you know, he's taken his team to a final and won it for them as well in the past. So he shouldn't feel down. He's a fantastic class player, uh, great all-rounder. He can win the game with the bat and the ball. So he shouldn't let this one, you know, performance let him down. Nasser Hussain, I just want to come to you. When a player's feeling a bit down, you know, they got a golden dog and they couldn't defend a score in the final over, you know, that probably is quite a demoralizing feeling. What do you do in that kind of situation as a cricket player uh, to come out of that trot and um, control the emotions? I would still obviously back my strengths. Um, I think, you know, if I was Shweb, I wouldn't be too demoralised after this performance. I mean, he's performed well in the past, as you know yourself. Uh, mm. you know, especially that amazing uh, run chase he made um, against Mulvey Sixers in the final. I don't know if you remember that when he played for Sixers. Yeah, I, I remember it very well. So we all, so we all, we all know his ability of him scoring runs. Uh, but I mean, it's only been one game, and uh, next game he will come back stronger. Uh, he is mentally strong, so uh, I'm back in shape to come back stronger for the next game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, unfortunately for this game, I, I wasn't able yeah. to be there live. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was keeping up with this on the scorecard. And really, I was amazed, especially since the first game. Uh, if you have a look, the, the scores were around 110, 115. And then suddenly you see the two games after the scores are around 50. And I think a key point taken away here is that whenever one team scores really low, it changes the complete dynamics of the game. The mindset of the players of the other team suddenly yeah. they, I, I don't know they're getting confused uh maybe there's not enough leadership initiative being shown the captain maybe needs to take control here and scientists i want to bring you in if you're chasing 56 in 12 overs uh how would you you know especially speaking to the youngsters in the team direct them what would you say to them uh, how do we go about this chase in a you know in the most constructive and meaningful way i think uh, the word I want to use here is intent. Uh, what I mean by that is it is a low total. And, um, you know, it, it does give you the option to maybe take just a teeny bit longer, but you don't want to go too far down the line as what Burn Grief Tigers did. They made it very difficult for themselves chasing uh, such a low total. Um, I know they've got a few players, Zane Gazan, for a bit out of Nick, set up the order, just to have a bit more time in the middle. Um, but it's also about intent, just being positive and uh, not just getting into a shell. Uh, you know, keep playing the strokes that you played in the past and um, stay positive, run well between the wickets and uh, you'll make it. But I think it's when you just get bogged down into the moment and uh, you know all that pressure is on you you're not performing and uh, you get into a bit of a shell uh, so what I would say is for obviously future endeavors obviously if you are chasing a low total be sensible about it there's no need to be reckless but be positive in your intent is the way that I would go forward um, if, if the ball is there if a bad ball is there put the bad ball away don't uh, just see as opportunity to you know take it easy still play the bad ball on its merit and, uh, you know, keep that positive intent going. That's the way I would say to my team. Yeah, thank, thanks for the points there. Uh, Adil, I saw you raise your hand there. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with Zaha's point. But I think the one difference in this low-scoring game compared to the other one is every single bowler in the pit small um, team <laughs> can bowl. So let's give a huge amount of credit to the two left armers in the team, um, Hamza and Jawaz, who actually set the tone for them. Mm. Um, so I think that's just a point I wanted to add that I think the Pittsmore team deserve a lot of credit for um, trying to defend that score because it was very low and they didn't give up. They fought right to the last ball um, and that's what we love to see in this tournament. Yeah, yeah, great point there, you know, and th this is one of the reasons Pittsmore are favourites in the eyes of many of the teams, to be honest with you, is because of mainly of their bowling attack. They have, and you know, this is why the league has improved so much. Uh, I remember in the uh, early stages, uh, oh, sorry, we have 10 minutes left, so we'll have to hurry through, but in the early stages, I remember each team used to have one or two good, solid gun bowler, and then, you know, you could <laughs> exploit the other bowlers that go after them. But, you know, we don't have that anymore. You Now you have to really play carefully and negotiate with all of the bowlers. So since we have 10 minutes left, I didn't even realise the time was going so fast. I think the key thing we need to discuss here, uh, or worth showing to our viewers, is the man of the moment, uh, Saeed Rahman. 
and uh, uh, what what a fantastic performance he had. You know, I I felt like one of the best innings I've seen in this uh, uh, in the various different uh, cricket arena leagues that we've had. And I was speaking to him actually uh, afterwards, and you know, one thing that people don't talk about enough uh, is the batting talent of Saeedur Rahman. I know he hasn't performed too well in the previous two leagues, but he's someone who thinks and bats. Uh, and that the think is a key word here, to be honest with you. A, a lot of batsmen go in and they just play the ball once it's come out of the bowler's hand and don't think where he's going to bowl. But Saeedur Rahman is definitely someone who likes to anticipate what kind of ball is coming. And uh, when I was speaking to him after the game, he said he's uh, observed the way Shoei bowls. And on that particular day, he was bowling shorter balls. So on the very first ball, he was actually expecting that ball to be short. And, uh, you know, you can probably see that for, from the way he plays this first initial shot. Uh, having that mindset as a passman really gives you an edge uh, over the other bowlers. And I was watching an interview, I remember, of Stain um, when he was talking about Tendulkar and what differentiated Tendulkar from a lot of the other batsmen that he's bowled to. And he said it was Tandulkar's ability to anticipate what the next ball would be. Uh, so, you know, that's really a sign of, of a great batsman. Uh, scientist, I know you raised your hand there. Please go ahead. It'll be a quick one. You know, in the years we've played with Sid, he's never been one to make a celebration. But if you look at that last delivery when he hit it for a six, look at the bat drop. Just look at the way he drops the bat and he turns around and he walks up and he's like, Easy peasy, I've done this before. Just shows how much it means to a guy like him who doesn't do that much celebrating when he takes wickets or takes runs. Yeah, yeah, fantastic to see. Um, (coughs) I'm really sorry, guys, but we'll have to be quite quick in the analysis of the last few games. Uh, Adil, I'll let you take over uh, to discuss your game. Uh, If you could give us like an overview. I'm sorry, you probably have a four or five, four to five minutes to do it. So um, uh, if you could just briefly summarise what you thought were the main points. Do you want me to share my screen or do you want me to just do a quick summary? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pull up the scorecard and you can do a summary. I think that will be better at this point. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so, in the in our game, actually. Um, so, if you just scroll up a second, Adnan, so I can look at the scorecard. Yeah, so lane top Lions put on a very unlike them performance, 53 for 7. So, you've got to give a lot of credit to the Donald boys. I mean, I didn't play in this game. I rested myself for Yusuf Bai, which uh, I'll talk about in a second. Um, I thought it was a thoroughly good bowling performance, really good. Everybody sharpened it in the field. Yusuf, uh, uh, Yusuf Bai has been an amazing addition to have him in our team. Um, so that was great. Um, in terms of the batting, um, if we go to the Donald Dynamite scorecard, um, yeah, I guess the pick of the boys were Zayn Wasim and Nasser, the rest all under mm-hmm. one figure. Um, I think we were very disappointed not to be able to chase 53 runs. We should have, those two points should have been in the bag. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't too pleased, but we'll mm-hmm. go again. The boys will definitely go again. But nonetheless, I think we've got to give a lot of credit to, I think, Saad Bashir. Um, I think mm-hmm. b- before this game, Nasser was telling me about um, how good he actually was and how much he does swing it. Um, and I think a lot of the boys may have underjudged him and maybe tried to attack him rather than just playing their normal games. They probably mm-hmm. thought, oh, he's not really that good. Not as in not good, but like maybe I can target him. But you know, you can't target him. He bowled on the money. He did his job. And yeah, I think in the end, the best. Yeah, I, I, definitely. I think you have to respect some bowlers. And Saad, yeah. you know, I, I call him the philosopher. He is a great thinker. And uh, you have to be very careful around a man who has so talent as much as Saad Bashir, uh, especially his in swinging Yorkers, akin to how scientist bowls really, but with a different right arm angle coming in. So that was a fantastic performance by Lane Top Lions, really. You know, despite the low score that they had to defend, uh, they backed themselves and did quite well. And a lesson for Donald Dynamite, Dynamite. So it's obviously very selfless of you, Adil, to actually drop out and let Yusuf play and actually let everyone else play as well. So, uh, you know, I definitely felt that your batting is also fantastic and it, and it brings some stability to the team. So maybe you being there, I think, could have made a significant difference. But I understand as a captain, you, you, you want to give your players all the chance. So that's really selfless and good of you. Uh, coming back to lane top, I think they are quite reliant to the top order as well. Harun, Tariq and Daniel Latif. So the, I don't know, Hussein had a fantastic performance here, but 
uh, you would like to hopefully see the middle order also start to uh, contribute. I've, been, I've played with Harun and uh, Uncle T before, and they, they have a great amount of potential. They are really good. They can, they can be lethal uh, when it is their time. Uh, but yeah, I, I would like to apologize for these two teams. I know we didn't give them that much time, but I only have four minutes left. So scientists, if you could please give a summary uh, of your team as well, just a quick uh, run through. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think our game compared to all the other games that uh, took place that night uh, was probably the most, I would say, average game. It was uh, average, um, you know, scoring game. It wasn't a really high scoring game. It was a low scoring game. Uh, my boys did well. Uh, Mazar, obviously, we all know what a fantastic player he is uh, with his rams, with his uh, ability to manipulate the ball 360 all around uh, the ground. <clears throat> but the point that I want to make is our new addition to the team, Nassim Khan. Um, what a fantastic signing he's been for us. You know, uh, he's uh, there's been a lot of talk about him. He's a fantastic bowler. The main thing is his experience. So he's bringing his experience from playing uh, the other league into our league. And uh, it's proven, uh, you know, uh, quite beneficial for my team. Um, mm -hmm. Hansworth, on the other hand, uh, you know, they also have an experienced team. Uh, all of their players have played previously in indoor. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't going to be easy for us. I'm, I'm never going to say that it was going to be a walk in the park after making 95. I knew that we were going to have to bowl well to defend it. And that's what I told my boys as well. I said to them that, look, this isn't going to be a walk in the park. We have to make sure that we put 100% in into every ball. Uh, we ball and uh, we make sure that there's no uh, sloppy fielding and everyone's on it at all times. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> really good performance. Uh, just happy to, you know, two uh, matches, two wins. Uh, top of the table and uh, you know we just hope to uh, keep that going for the remainder of the tournament fantastic thank you very much and very well summarized uh, you know great performances by both teams here I know maybe Hansworth fell short but they do have some fantastic players here uh, who I think will you know uh, pose a threat to a lot of other teams uh, talking about you know Ittahar of Rose who have seen play uh, some fantastic innings uh, in the past and Majid I still remember I think he picked up a four or four for or five for in one of the games and five, five, five for, yes so I think that's still one of the best figures in the yeah. all the editions of this uh, uh, game so that's fantastic really strong team uh, but yeah really wishing the best to, to all the teams uh, do forgive us if we you know took a bit too long here um, this is the first one coming back into the season so we'll try to have a bit more structure in the coming podcast uh, sorry <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thank you very much, uh, scientists Adil and the Nasa Hussain for joining me here. It's been a pleasure having you. No yeah, no uh, my pleasure. My pleasure.